Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. I've been taking you on a journey through Paris Fashion Week and um, we've just seen a couple of shows and we're going to see some other shows, but we are interrupted because something terrible happens between shows. And this is something that has been reported by not many news outlets, but it should be reported by way, way more news outlets. A little boy at the age of 12, some report that he's at the age of 13 by the name of Louis, has been hit and abused by a security guard from LVMH. Now, everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only, just my opinion, not rooted in truths or facts, everything's alleged. But it's really important to talk about this and especially to what has been done to this boy and said to this boy. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. You can push the join button next to the subscription button to become a member today and gain access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Dickable, all spelled together for extra perks. Thank you to my members and patrons who have already pledged and for supporting my channel. This video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. I live stream every Saturday and you're all invited to join the live chats and conversation. So let me cue in my co-chatters. Hi guys. This is a really uh, important topic, very dear to my heart, because I do not stand for bullying. I do not stand for harassment and for hurting or injuring any people in any way, shape or form, whether that be physical, uh, verbal, in any way, shape or form. So uh, there's this little boy uh, called Louis who um, is some outlets report that he's 13, but in an interview with him, it is stated that he's 12 years old. He's going to school, and since one year, he reports Fashion Week. So he goes to Fashion Week with his little camera, and he goes to the shows, and he takes pictures. And he is an entrepreneur, let me tell you. Like, if he grabs a good shot of some star or of a nice look on the catwalk or outside after the show, you know, he then he can sell it to some newspaper, or he publishes it in the newspaper of his school, such a sweet boy. I saw the interview with him. Now, obviously, I'm going to protect his identity. I'm not going to show you a picture of him. He is underage. But he has given interviews. I think his family allowed him to give an interview. So you can see his face if you go look him up on Twitter. We'll get to all that in a moment. But first, let me just tell you what happened here. So at one of these LVMH events, whether it be right after the fashion show, during the fashion show, at some catered event. Basically, this was an LVMH event where they allegedly rented out the entire Louvre uh, Museum for their show. But then there was also kind of like a little, I guess, get together or party after uh, or before. And Louis was also outside waiting to take pictures. This kid is adorable, by the way. When you see him in an interview, I mean, he's just, your heart breaks. Anyway, so he's standing there fully respectful, not even in the event. He's outside of the event, and several stars are passing by. Now, in this particular video, you know, Janet Jackson is there. She passes by. We see her kind of turning around, smiling, waving. And um, somebody catches the moment when one of the security guards from LVMH take this little kid slap the shit out of him. Now, in the interview, the kid says it happened twice. After that, this video started to go viral. Allegedly, LVMH started to threaten people to take it down. Some people did take it down because they wanted to hide what happened, allegedly. But then it came to the attention of a lawyer. And this lawyer's name wonderful gentleman, uh, Juan Branco. Juan, I hope your name is pronounced Juan. Maybe it's Juan. But anyway, Juan Branco is on Twitter. Juan Branco, J-U-A-N, surname B-R-A-N-C-O, says he's a lawyer. He caught that video before it was deleted from other places, and he shared it on his Twitter. And then he says... Um, something in French, <laughs> which Branco told Newsweek that the footage was recorded and originally posted online by an eyewitness who removed the video after being threatened with blacklisting and legal proceedings. The lawyer said the incident took place on the Esplanade of the Louvre, 
with the child rushing to try to have a selfie. Branco added, once the footage was transmitted, he verified its origin, the conditions of its deletion, and decided to make it public. Now his statement says, as a lawyer and a public figure, and also a very connoisseur of this world, I can't be threatened as the original person would have. It's nonetheless extremely problematic to see how it could have gone unnoticed. Now, I'm going to show you the picture now, you guys. Um, mind you, there's a whole video that you can see on Branco's Twitter. I'm not going to show you violence on YouTube. I'm, I can't. YouTube doesn't allow us to do it. So what I did do is from the video that Branco shared on his Twitter, I took a screenshot of the moment right after the slap happened. So what you're going to see in this photo is no slap, no violence happening. It's right after. But you, And I've blurred out the faces of all the people surrounding the security guard. But you're going to see the security guard with his hand as it moves away right after he's done doing what he did to the little boy. Heartbreaking. Let me show you. Now, here's the thing. <clears throat> Kev, right, they would never threaten uh, a, a grown man or woman this way. Now, it doesn't end here. What I'm about to tell you now is something that other newscasters are not talking about. Everybody's trying to hide something very important here. This little boy, in his interview that he gave after the incident happened, said something very important that everybody's not commenting on. I don't know why. Well, we're going to comment about it here. So this security guy, first of all, said to the boy, you know, step back. The boy stepped back. The security guy was bullying him. Uh, the boy did retaliate and tell him something like, you know, stop annoying me. He might have, you know, said something to him. And then the allegedly everything, right? I'm paraphrasing what the boy said in his interview. And then the guard at that point started slapping him once, slapping him twice. The second time, well, he took him by the collar. And when he slapped him the second time, he called him a little F, A, G. Then there's another G. Then there's an O and that word and a T, right? So... He called him a dirty little F while he slapped him the second time. No news are reporting about that. However, what a lot of idiots in France are doing is commenting under this post, this Twitter post by Franco saying, it's just a kid, you know, educate him. Oh, you call this violence? This is nothing. Oh, please, this is not news. I know that the French have a tendency of being arrogant to a point that I just want to vomit out of my nipples. But this exceeds every limit. You do not harm anybody. But a kid, no. There's no excuse. <laughs> There's no excuse. This little boy, so cute with his little camera, Walking around, he's hustling, y'all, at the age of 12 or 13, and he's respectful, and he's dressed up, and he's, like, super, you know, he has his little suit on, and he's, like, nicely dressed with his little backpack, he's respectful to the event, and he gets treated like this? And called a dirty little F? By the way, the kid says that in the interview, which you can see on Twitter. He says that. I'm literally quoting what he says. And that interview has subtitles in French. You can translate it and you see when he gets to that point. But LVMH, to go that far, to try to delete this video everywhere it, it pops up and threatening people, allegedly? Girl, that's no way to do business. Absolutely no way. Now, a spokesperson for Louis Vuitton told Newsweek 
Louis Vuitton condemns all forms of violence and sincerely apologizes for this inexcusable action. As soon as the Maison became aware of this incident, the service provider was immediately contacted to ensure that the security agent no longer work for Louis Vuitton and that necessary measures be implemented going forward to, pre to prevent any future reoccurrences. Branco said the incident shows how private corporations being allowed increasing influence over public spaces in Paris, meaning Branco raises another point saying, how come a huge, powerful corporation like LVMH is given access to rent out the entire Louvre for their little gathering, fashion show, cocktail drink, whatever. Public space rented out to a private institution to use for their gathering, to punch little kids at their discretion. On public space. This is not private space. This is public space. So, in America, <laughs> beyond a hell of a lawsuit, beyond, because it's also, the city is also responsible. Because it didn't happen in a private, it happened at the Louvre. <laughs> it happened in a private, it's, it's not private street, it's a public street. So there's that. But then there's also the responsibility. Now, notice how Louis Vuitton in their statement, LVMH, notice how LVMH in their statement make it very clear. It's not us. We hired these external security people and we contacted them and want to make sure that this person never works for us again. I'm like, it's also typical of these huge corporations. They never assume any responsibility. It's all, and, and because they know how to play the law. They know how to play the game of law. They know how to, I'm not going to hire you directly. I'm going to hire you through a third party. That's how they never assume responsibility for anything. So it's like, oh, we don't stand for this. CyberCoco says the fact that LVMH first action was to try and remove the video shows where their localities lay. Allegedly, right? But yeah. My heart breaks because if you guys see the little kid talk, he, this kid is clever. This kid, he ends his interview by saying, you know, now he's going to be scared. Like, this this is something that is going to definitely scar him. He's going to be extra careful next time. But he doesn't give up. And I love that, that he's like, he's going to keep going. He's going to keep doing what he's doing, even though he's more scared now. Even though he's going to be... This scars you, you guys. Physical violence scars you. Not just when you're young and little. Also, when you're a grown-up. Even demeaning words scar you for life, but also physic. Look at this. And the fact that some people in the comment section say not a big deal. What sort of a monster are you to say this is not a big deal? Cyber Coco says, this is trauma for that child and it won't ever leave them. This will remain in their life. I concur. I concur. Um, and it's not enough to say, oh, well, you know, LVMH is like, okay, well, we're going to make sure that this dude never works for, a for the secure. What does this mean? He's probably not going to get fired by the security agency. They're just not going to send him to work for LVMH when they're contacted by LVMH. But he's probably still going to keep working. Maybe it's his company. What do we know? <laughs> we don't know anything about him. And he's like kind of void of any responsibility. And quite frankly... You might say, yeah, Deco, but you didn't know the whole story. Maybe something happened before that triggered this dude. Sorry, D dude, you're double the size of this kid, triple the size of this kid. You probably got less brains than the kid, allegedly, because if you behaved like a like, like a freaking Neanderthaler, you're probably not as evolved as the kid is. But all that aside, your security, you're a mountain of a man who probably goes to the gym all the time, packs himself with testosterone, you know, triggered by everything. 
and you let your whatever the hell you got inside of you out on a little teeny tiny kid? There's no excuse, dude. No matter what the kid could have said to you, this is <laughs> you being the size that you are, the age that you are, treating a kid like this? That is not even your kid, that has nothing to do with you in your life? No, there's no excuse. There's no excuse behaving like an animal to a child. No excuse. Absolutely no excuse. Grown ass man behaving like that. No. I have no words. Like, this. For me, this is not just, oh, fire him. This is also sue him. <laughs> sue him for everything he's worth and then some. And then some. The trauma that this kid is not going to have for the rest of their life? Well, there's no price for that, really. But... Marion says, slapping a kid just because he gets close to celebrities as if celebrities were superior beings. Well, that's a whole other can of worms. He wasn't even that close to them because he was stepping away. He was anyway on the street. Like, he was at a distance, allegedly. So there was, like, nothing... Aisha says, imagine how he treats his own kids or how he treats his wife or girlfriend. If he's so quick to slap a total stranger kid, you can imagine, you can just imagine how capable he is of and what he's capable of doing to people that are close to him. It's, I mean, no words. Yeah, Lorenzo says, the really sad thing about it is that he's going to get clean out of it. I also think that uh, in France, he's just going to get, you know, easily out of it. That's France for you. And a lot of the French people in the comment sections are just like downplaying this like it's no big deal. He called the kid a dirty little F on top of hitting him. So add to the physical abuse... You're adding psychological verbal abuse. Like, what more could he have done? Killed him. That's literally the last thing left. Like, he did everything else to him. And people have the audacity, French people, to comment under this, to say, oh, la la, oh, mon dieu, whatever. <laughs> you call this violence? Huh? Seriously? No words. No words. And LVMH will not pay any consequences as Asia. Well, if they can wash their hands off of the situation in terms of legalities and say, well, we hired this company for this event only, meaning they are not part of LVMH, right? They're externals, then that company is responsible. Now, a good lawyer could find ways to make everybody responsible, <laughs> probably. Um, but in this case, most luckily, they would try to push the blame onto that company, and then the company would try to push the blame onto him, and then it would all land onto him, and he probably doesn't have the funds to actually compensate for damages. And then again, don't forget, Europe in general here, not just France, but Europe in general, is not so quick on the trigger uh, of lawsuits like America is. And also, when a case like this does go uh, into court, the compensations are not as high as in America. Like, you're not going to get millions. You're going to get a couple thousand for this, if anything, if it even makes it that far. Uh, so it's really, really devastating. There's like no... And the kid is marked for life because that fear is now in him. There's no way you can get that out of him. I mean, yeah, Lorenzo says, in Europe you get zilch, zero. Yeah, Styling Secret says, no, yeah, you're right, Jacob, the law is different in Europe. Uh, Zena says, I wouldn't buy from Louis Vuitton until they fire him. Well, it has nothing to do with Louis. That's the thing. LVMH... It's a it's it's a it's it's really complicated, and the fact that the brands also get the opportunity to not be responsible, because they do temporary hires of externals. 
Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Um, you know, and um, it's by the way the same with the workers. Many workers are not hired fully. They're just like on a temporary basis so that the company doesn't have responsibilities over them, that they don't have to pay the full taxes over them, that they don't have to pay them all the benefits. They're going to use the system, and the system is built to their advantage, bottom line. They're going to use the system to the, to the, to the full capacity and advantages for the companies, for the brands. The workers always lose. Always. Don't forget that. Just don't forget that. And um, so, so they don't get paid much in the end, you know. So ex externals, for example, that make their shoes in some of these brands, you know, paid $7, $5 an hour to make a shoe for a big brand, you know. And they're hired as externals. And then whatever that shoe body is made gets sent over to the other factory that maybe does have the people that actually hired to work for them and they just do the final touches. There's a lot, a lot that goes on. And the fashion world, and this has nothing to do just, you know, with LVMH, it's all across the board. Many different brands. The lack of transparency um, in these production chains and environments and conditions for working, are it, the, the lack of transparency is just... It's disconcerting to a point where, I mean, the fact that they all get away with this and that all of it is technically legal just shows us that the people who make the laws seem to be the real corrupt ones because to allow certain laws to pass means somebody had to pay you to make that law pass. Okay? Just my opinion. Everything's just alleged. Food for thought. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Uh, and until next time, never forget to never give up on love and subscribe.